Okay, so uh, welcome back. In the last lecture, we have seen uh, a two-stroke engine. Okay, and we have really spent some time in understanding the construction of the two-stroke engine and how the how does these two strokes operate. And now in this lecture, we are going to see. So uh, just to recall, uh, you have seen these two images last time in the last lecture, and we have seen the, both the type of uh, let's say construction of a two-stroke engine. So in this lecture, what we are going to do? we are going to study a four stroke engine okay so as you will recall the four processes of suction compression work done and exhaust okay or expansion so work done is also called as expansion where the gases expand uh, and they push the piston down so it is called as uh, also as an expansion stroke so these four processes were taking place in two strokes of the engine okay and today we will see how these processes can be also done in four strokes okay so let us see a four stroke engine okay so here is a video of a four stroke engine now let us try to understand each and every component of this engine okay uh, you will recall there is a piston okay the piston is here it is going it is again having the reciprocatory motion there is also a connecting rod okay this is the connecting rod okay there is also a crank shaft which is rotating okay now this crank shaft there is a timing gear you can see timing gear and you can also see a cam shaft you can also see a small electrical circuit here which is making and breaking you can see make and break so it is giving an electrical signal to the this particular electrical signal is through the battery the coil the choke coil so to say okay it is giving a signal to the or it is giving current to the uh, the spark plug okay now here you see there are two distinct types of valves okay two distinct type of valves okay one is an inlet valve again a new word for you now inlet valve and one is an exhaust valve okay one is an inlet valve one is an exhaust valve now this exhaust valve you can see it is operated by a cam shaft this is this is a cam shaft which is timed that means at a particular position of the crank shaft it the the cam opens it pushes this this push rod this is called as a push rod so it 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 pushes the push rod up and this push rod eventually pushes the exhaust valve down okay and what what do you see here is a connecting element between the push rod and uh, let us say the exhaust valve and this is called as the rocker arm the rocker arm and mind you there is also a rocker arm which is operating the inlet valve also okay which has a separate timing gear which is not shown in this video but essentially this valve opening closing is also occurring through a timing gear which is connected to the same crankshaft mechanism through a cam shaft so this is a cam shaft rotating there is a cam which is located on the top this cam pushes the push rod the push rod essentially this uh, uh, through this rocker arm it opens and closes there is a spring here there is a retainer spring which which pushes the exhaust valve back to its position so as we go along we will have a lot of uh, let's say time to study the 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 shape of the exhaust valve uh, the uh, how how it operates the how it provides the sealing and things like that and what are the important elements uh, which has to be considered while designing an exhaust and an inlet valve so now let us first today in this lecture let us try to understand the four stroke and the two stroke mechanism now here you can see very distinctly four things happening one is a suction then compression then ignition that means the ignition is followed by the expansion stroke which delivers essentially the work to the piston and an exhaust and as you can see there are four strokes which are happening so suction compression expansion exhaust suction compression expansion exhaust suction compression exhaust so you can see that these four distinct thermodynamic processes of taking the charge in compressing the charge then igniting the charge and doing work pushing the piston down to do the work and then exhausting from the engine the burnt gases these four distinct thermodynamic processes are actually occurring in four distinct strokes okay so for every for every stroke there is a thermodynamic process in the in the two stroke engine in the previous lecture which you have seen in the two stroke engine these four processes were actually occurring in only two strokes of the engine that means part of the processes were actually 
superimposed on each other okay so we will we will when we when we make the diagrams when we make the thermodynamic diagrams of these processes on let us say uh, uh, pressure volume uh, coordinates then we will be distinctly we will be able to see how these four processes occur and how these strokes are related so as, as you can see here when the suction stroke is occurring the inlet valve is open the exhaust valve is closed okay now as you go down and then you compress so during the compression you naturally want both the valves to be closed okay so both the valves remain closed okay during the compression stroke after the compression has taken place that means certain amount of fresh charge has been compressed naturally whenever you do compression what will happen the pressure of the volume will increase this 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 is our system the system the system volume is decreasing so the pressure has to increase the temperature has to increase and then you have to ignite the fuel now in the case of diesel engine we did not have a spark plug you must have noticed on a day to day life also that diesel engines do not have a spark plug that means essentially they the, the ignition takes place the ignition takes place just because of the compression that means the temperature is brought to a level where the the charge ignites by itself what we call as auto ignition of the charge takes place okay but in a petrol engine this is not so we need to have an external energy source which is usually a spark plug that is what is called what what is seen here this particular spark plug uh, generates a spark that means it it there is a high voltage uh, the high voltage supply is given to it and essentially uh, it ionizes the air locally and there there is a spark which is generated and this spark essentially the 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 compressed mixture which is around this spark uh, will ignite okay so it will act as the starting point of the ignition and then the ignition the, the slowly the entire charge let's say burns it st it starts combustion okay and then because of the combustion the enthalpy the the chemical energy which is stored in the fuel is released okay in and and you know uh, you know the term enthalpy okay so the enthalpy of combustion is released and this enthalpy part of it gets converted into useful work which we get through the piston via the connecting rod to the crank shaft and then you can connect either a wheel to the crank shaft you can connect a propeller to the crank shaft you can connect a grass cutting mechanism to the uh, to the crank shaft you can you can connect uh, uh, you can uh, uh, connect a turbine Uh, a small water turbine or a pump you know uh, uh, you, you can connect a pump uh, to uh, the 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 impeller of the pump you can connect it to this shaft and then you can use uh, you use it to pump water for example okay so essentially uh, these uh, wh what you see the difference between the previous uh, let us say the previous uh, engine construction and this engine construction uh, is that four distinct strokes are given to four distinct thermodynamic processes okay you also see uh, that it, it it requires these valve mechanism it requires this uh, this timing mechanism and it also requires uh, this uh, this particular electrical timing uh, let's say here you see a mechanical plug you know in in uh, in uh, in modern engines uh, there is no mechanical plug as such but what we have in an engine management system so essentially this switching on and switching off Uh, is now done mostly by an electronic components or electronic circuitry which is essentially connected to the engine rotation and it senses the engine rotation and at a particular time when uh, this uh, particular piston is near to the top dead center uh, at that time the spark is ignited now uh, there are uh, there is a lot of technology which goes into when exactly this spark should be uh, should be let's say ignited at what time this uh, inlet valve should open at what time this exhaust valve should close because as you will realize that these are mechanical parts and they have their own inertia that means they are the the valve is the the valve is let us say uh, uh, is in a stop position you have to open it and then close it so it goes through a cycle of acceleration and deceleration and it has a finite mass so there is a inertia associated with it so it it doesn't open completely at one go it, it it's not instantaneous it takes finite amount of time to open it finite amount of time to close it uh, okay and as the engine as the engine operates this exhaust valve and inlet valve become hot okay because slowly the engine warms up 
So as you will appreciate, all heated elements, their their length increases. Okay. So at what exact time, uh, you know, this rocker arm should push it, and should there be a gap between this rocker arm to to allow for the expansion of the ex exhaust valve? So these are several points which we will study over a period of time. Uh, through in this in this lecture also, we will appreciate why these things are done, how this engine is designed, and naturally. Uh, this uh, because of this high temperature we also need to provide cooling of this engine so there will be also a cooling mechanism which will be around this engine so several things uh, will be done to make this system operative okay that means we can get useful positive work with reasonable efficiency or with high efficiency in fact uh, and with low level of pollution that means low the your exhaust gas should not have harmful elements it should not have carbon monoxide it should not have nitrogen oxides it should not have unburnt fuel or as little unburnt fuel as possible uh, it should not have other harmful elements because as you know uh, let's say uh, the fuel is not uh, a petrol or a diesel is a mixture of hydrocarbons that means it has several hydrocarbons typically 150 to 200 different varieties of hydrocarbons are are, are actually there in the in the mixture which we get as which we call as petrol or diesel okay so we will be studying about uh, uh, you know the the composition of of these fuels and how these composition eventually affect uh, let's say the exhaust uh, the, the 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 combustion mechanism uh, the the rate at which heat is delivered the rate at which combustion takes place and the type of exhaust which we will get so depending on the two stroke engine and a four stroke engine construction wise they are different we have seen it also the peripheral devices the cooling devices the requirement of cooling devices the requirement of timing gears uh, the requirement of uh, let us say uh, the the pressure vessel thickness because as you will see the pressure increases here so you have to design this engine in such a manner that the pressures which are encountered here are actually taken care of okay then of course because of this continuous motion there are vibrations which are transmitted to the engine foundation to uh, on the engine so the, there is a difference between the way a two stroke engine operates and a four stroke engine operates in terms of several of its features okay other than the geometric features which we have seen and then of course the type of fuel which can be burnt the, the type of exhaust which we get and what really happens what are the advantages and disadvantages of two strokes uh, like, like completing these four processes in two strokes and completing these uh, let us say uh, uh, four processes in four distinct uh, let's say strokes so what are the advantages and disadvantages of these two systems we will also study as we go along so for for the time being uh, in the last two lectures uh, we have tried to cover the basic difference between a two stroke engine and a four stroke engine uh, the, these these are only at the basic level differences as we go uh, along we will see other differences also which will crop up which will which will be appreciated by you uh, once i introduce you to the subject at uh, deeper levels so thank you very much